Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this IF Oxford event. I will pass you over to Sophie from Rutherford Appleton Laboratory, who will be guiding us through this workshop. So over to you, Sophie. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fourth lesson, fourth workshop of Glow Your Own. Thank you so much for coming back. Um, we've got a, uh, an exciting um, day for you today, an exciting work workshop session for you today, where we're not only going to have a light that goes on, but we are going to control that light um, using not just code, but electronic components. And once we get to the end of today, that means we're going to have all of the tools that we need to be able to make some really beautiful art and really beautiful um, things for the Christmas Light Festival. Um, so before I get started, I'm just going to let um, my friends say hello. So we have Sarah back again from Science Oxford, who's been doing such a fantastic job of helping Hi, everybody. you all. Um, thank you for coming, Sarah. And we also have my friend Helen, who works with, at the lab with me, um, but she works in our central laser facility. So the lights that she works with are much, much bigger than the little, than the little LEDs that we've been playing with. Helen, do you want to say hello to everyone? Hi, everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Helen Towery from the central laser facility. Um, and next week, I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit more about the Central Laser Facility and also about art, because I'm an artist. Thank you for coming along, Helen. Um, you should definitely do the, do the coding as well today. Uh, and we also have Tommy back again. So Tommy is our artist from Fusion Arts. Yes. Hey, Tommy. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, thanks for having me back again. Um, today, I'll just be talking to you guys through a couple of supplies and uh, hopefully saying a few things to inspire you and get your um, creative minds warmed up to think of ways we can take our lights in a more artistic three-dimensional capacity. So um, at some point we'll get into some of that, okay? So that should be quite fun. Fab, thank you, Tommy. We will make sure that we go over, we save some time at the end uh, for Tommy to, uh, so we can talk about next week, which I'm really looking forward to. Okay. So uh, everyone, what we're going to do today, as I said, is we are going to learn how to control our lights using our Arduino, um, uh, using um, our Arduino and things like buttons, which you can just see here, um, or uh, other components you've got in your Arduino kit. But first, we are going to build our circuits on Tinkercad. So um, if everybody could split their screen, and go to Tinkercad. I've just popped the um, uh, we've just popped the um, the link in the chat. So once you've got there, uh, once you've opened up your um, Tinkercad, you could go to Tinkercad and log in either using your own login or using a nickname. And once you're there, give me a wave if I can see you on the screen, or um, uh, you can use reactions to. Um, to say something, anything you like. You can even put that you're making a cup of tea because that's always fun. Brill. All right. So I'm just going to share my screen so that we can all be at the same point. Um, and then I'm going to make you all a bit bigger because you've suddenly got small. There we go. Fantastic. So you should be looking at something like this. If you need a nickname, just pop something in the chat and then Sarah will very kindly give you a nickname to use so you can log in. Okay. So once you get to this point, then if you remember, we click on circuits and we're gonna create a new circuit. So create new circuit here. It's thinking about it. Uh, and I'm gonna call, so we've got this uh, open and I'm just gonna change the name to glow your own four so that I remember which section, session we're on. So when you're ready to start building your circuits, give me a wave, make a reaction, um, however you'd like to do it. Oh, fab, I can see Ben's all there ready. Lewis, brilliant, everybody. Um, fantastic. Brilliant, we've got lots of raised hands. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to uh, have an LED. You remember that's what we call our little lights like this. Um, and we're going to get that to turn on, but only when we want it to. So the first things that we need to do, um, just like before, is we want to bring our Arduino over like this. 
and we want to bring our breadboard over as well. And the beginning bit of this is going to be just the same as in previous weeks. We're going to build a circuit with a light with an LED in. So are you all ready to build a circuit with an LED in? Yep, I can see some nods. Uh, fantastic. We've got some more people who have raised their hands. So when you get to this, just give me a wave to make so that I know that most of us are ready. Fab, brilliant. So um, the first thing we want to do is to just get our light on there. And we've done this bit before. Uh, if you've watched it on demand, you'll have seen this before or if you've joined us before. So we're gonna pull our LED over um, and I'm gonna put it up here. I'm gonna have a red LED because I feel like um, I feel in a red mood today, but you can have whatever color of LED that you want, okay? Uh, and then I want a wire that goes from this leg of the LED all the way down to one of my digital pins. So I'm gonna choose pin two, just cause that's where it, that's where it went. So everybody uh, draw your wire. So it goes from this leg here all the way down to pin two. Okay, then you remember, does anybody remember what the next thing we want to do is? Give me a wave if you think you know what the next bit is. Oh, some people do, fantastic. Uh, so next we want to finish, uh, we want to carry on with our circuit. So we're gonna get a resistor. And we're gonna pull that over so that it lines up here. So that one of the resistor pins uh, goes to this LED and one of them goes to this long line here, okay? And we want this resistor to change its value. So instead of this, we want to change this to ohms. That's what this funny symbol means, it means ohms. And we want that to be about 220, okay? And then the final bit to get this to work is we want to get a, um, uh, a line that goes from this long line here next to the minus sign to the ground. So we want a wire that goes from there to the ground. And I'm going to color this wire orange because it's going to the ground. And orange is kind of like a, a ground color. Okay, so give me a wave when you're, when you're there. If you're not quite uh, caught up, that's absolutely fine. Um, you can watch it on, uh, on demand. Uh, if you haven't if you haven't done this bit before, but I can see that lots of you have got there, which is fantastic. And you'll remember that this is what we call a complete circuit. So you can draw a line all the way from the Arduino up this wire, through the LED, through the light, through the resistor, and then um, uh, and then back to the Arduino to this point called ground. Okay, so. That's brilliant, everybody. And let's just check that our code is working, uh, that our circuit is right. So what I'm gonna do is we press the code button, we can control our LED. And then just like before, we're gonna use the same code. So we want our LED to always be on, let's say, just cause that's easier. So go to code and then to control uh, we would do this repeat while loop. So that means that's just an instruction to the Arduino to carry on doing this while whatever condition, question we put in there is true. So once you've got that, we want to go to maths and this triangly one, we're just gonna say while one equals one, okay? And what we want to happen, because this is just us testing, and it's really important when you're doing code and when you're building circuits to test quite often, because if you test often, then it's easier for you to figure out where you've, uh, if you've made a mistake. And if you're like me, you make mistakes quite a lot. So what we want to happen is we want this LED to be turned on. So we take this output, we go to set pin to high. But if you remember, this says set pin zero to high. And my circuit is not connected to pin zero at all. It's connected to pin two. You can tell which pin it is just by hovering over it. So I'm gonna change that to pin two. So all this should do when I press simulate, start simulation is to turn my LED on. 
Is everybody there with me? Give me a wave if you're ready to, um, if you're ready to do it. Fab, good job then. Um, fantastic. Loads of you doing really well. All right, so to see if we're working, we're gonna press start simulation. Um, so fingers crossed, let's all, uh, let's all do it together. Three, two, one, start simulation, simulation. And look, my little light has turned on. So that circuit is working. Does everybody else have a light that's turned on? Um, raise your, oh, fantastic. I've got some people with lights turned on. Yeah. Oh, Brill, look at all of you, you're doing so well. Okay, right, I'm gonna stop that um, and, and turn that away because we're gonna build the next part of our circuit. Now, this is quite exciting, I really like this bit. What we're gonna do to our circuit is I want my LED to turn on, uh, my little light to turn on when it gets dark, okay? I don't want to have to say, oh, it's, I don't want to have to press a button or anything or turn my code on. I just want it to be running all the time. And when it gets dark, I want my light to turn on. And that's actually quite easy for us to do using an Arduino. Because if you look in your, um, in your kits, you, you'll see a little thing that looks a bit like this. I'm gonna try and hold it up to the screen so you can see. Um, it's a lot, got long thin, uh, long thin pins and it's a sort of squished circle on the top with a, some wavy lines. And that is called a light dependent resistor or a photoresistor. And what that does is it measures the amount of light that it receives. So in Tinkercad, you can find this by going down here, quite far down. And can you see this one that's called photoresistor? Yep, so everybody find that on Tinkercad, click on it and then drag it over so that it's over here. And we're gonna use this to tell our light, our LED, when to turn on or when to turn off, okay? Um, right, but at the moment, that's not a complete circuit, is it? Uh, and we've learned that we always have to have a complete circuit um, to, uh, for it to work. So um, this circuit works a little bit differently to the other circuits. Uh, to the to the LED one, to the light one. So what I need you to do is to draw a line from this pin, so the pin on the right hand side, all the way down to this bottom row that's next to the plus sign. And that's where we're going to give it some power. All right. And instead of making this green, I'm going to change that to red just to show that it's getting power from there. Okay, so once you've got your photoresistor and your red wire, give me a wave just so that I know that you're all with me. Brilliant, I can see some of you are there, fantastic. Well, okay. So this resistor is a little bit different from the, um, from the LED and that it needs even more power. So we need to, um, uh, we need to connect this line here, this red line, to some special power that comes out. So if you see down at the bottom of the Arduino down here, you can see the words that say power. And next uh, to it, there's one that says five volts. Yeah, can you all see that one down here, five volts? Hang on, if I zoom in a bit, that might make it easier. So here it says 5V, all right? And what we need to do is we want to connect this line, this line that's next to the red, we want to go all the way down and connect it to that bot button that says 5B. Oh. And again, I'm going to make this wire red, and that just reminds me that this is going to a power. This is going to power. All right, so once you've done that line, um, give me a wave, raise your hand um, or something so that we know where everybody is. Brill, lots of raised hands going on, fantastic. Um, for some reason, I can't see the chat. Um, it's probably hidden behind something else. So Sarah, if people need me to start going more slowly or something, just give me a shout. Okay, all right, so 
let's look back at our whole circuit. So we've got, um, we've got a lot of our circuit built, but we need to carry on, we need to finish it up. So we're gonna get another resistor um, and that we're gonna connect that to the other little leg of our photoresistor. So it goes right here. You can see it goes through here to this photoresistor and then connects to the row next to the blue line, next to the minus line. And that you can just leave the power of uh, the resistance of that, this value here, just the same. Okay, so once you've done that, we've only got one more, one more piece of, um, uh, one more piece of the circuit that we need to do. So give me a wave when you're ready to put the next bit of the circuit in. Fab. Brilliant. Okay. So that is a complete circuit and that will work as a circuit electricity will flow. You see it will go from the Arduino along this red wire up here through this red wire through here through the resistor along and then back down to the Arduino. But we want a way to be able to tell uh, to figure out what light the, our little photoresistor is measuring. So we're going to use this as an input. So we're gonna send information back through to the Arduino. And to do that, we're gonna draw a line. Uh, we're gonna draw a wire that goes from um, this leg of the, uh, of the photoresistor. Sorry, I completely forgot what it was called there. All the way over here, all the way down and to one of these pins at the bottom that are called analog. Um, and I'm going to make this wire yellow and that just shows me that it's a it's measuring something and it's sending information back rather than an output like my LED. So you, uh, you can see here it goes from uh, this pin A1 all the way to this photoresistor uh, to this cute little squiggly squiggly component. I think this is the prettiest component that's drawn. Um, now, does anybody know, uh, just while everybody's finishing drawing that, uh, that wire in, does anyone know the difference between these digital ones and these analog ones? What's the difference between digital and analog? Anyone got any ideas? Fab, I think some of you have, have a clue, but uh, which is awesome. Uh, so uh, the difference is with digital, Digital, you can either be on or you can be off. So you can, we can turn our LED on or we can turn it off. Um, but with analog, these ones at the bottom, it's not just on or off. It can be lots of different values. So it can be, oh, it's really, really dark. It's a little bit dark. It's quite dark. It's not very dark at all. It's super bright. So analog's really useful if you've got something that might have lots and lots of different values. Um, uh, where it's digital, here we just have on or off. Okay, so now we've built our circuit. Are you all ready to code it? Um, yeah, brilliant. Okay, so let's go back to our code and we can see here, oh, I'm just gonna move that so we can see, still see the, ooh, so we can still see the circuit. So this is our code and this will still work. I'll, I can start simulating, it turns on. But what I want to do is to turn my light on only when it gets dark, all right? And so for that, we're gonna use a really, really useful little bit of code called an if loop. So we go back to this control here and you can see here, there are these commands called if then else. And this is really, really useful. We use this all the time in coding. So grab this if and pop it inside your repeat loop, just like that. And what this does um, is it just asks the computer a question. And if the question is yes, if the answer to the question, if the computer decides the answer to that question is yes, then it will do one thing, it will do whatever's in here. And if the answer is no, it will do whatever is in there, okay? So what we want to do is we want to fit, we want to say, well, if, um, if it's dark, so we want to ask the question, is it dark? And then if it is, we want to turn the light on. And if it's not, we want the light to be turned off. 
So let's do that bit first. So we'll pop here, turn the light that's connected to pin two off. So give me a wave when you've got that far and you've got your if loops and your um, turn on or turn off. Yeah, has everybody remembered to make sure that the right pin is here and that it says high or low? Because those are things I often um, forget about um, and mistake. Real. So I think most of you, lots of you are there, fantastic. So what we have left to do now is the question, all right? So we're gonna, just like up here, we're gonna use maths to do the question. Uh, and we're gonna use this pointy one. So if something is bigger or less than something else. Now, what we want to do is if the light that this measures is less than a number, then we want the light to be turned on. All right, and just for now, I'm gonna tell you that the number that we want it to be less than is around about 350, 400. Um, in a minute, once we've all got this working, we can. I'll show you how to figure out what number to put in there. But just for now, you can put 400 in there. And here, in this bit here, we want to test if the light that's being measured is less than 400. So we go to a block that we don't think we've used before called input just over here. And you can see there are all of these different things that say read. So we want to read what value our resistor, our photoresistor is sending to pin one, pin A1. You can see this here saying read analog pin. Yeah, so pull that in here and change that to whichever of the analog pins you've used, All right? It's important that you say analog pin rather than the one above that says digital pin. Otherwise it will start asking questions of these pins here and we haven't got anything in them. So give me a wave when you are ready to do that and then we'll just go through the code together. Fab, lots of you are there. Brilliant, Ooh. sorry, I just hit myself in the face with my headphones. Um, Brill, you're all doing so amazingly everybody. Um, if you are, uh, if you're not quite there, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry, it does take a while, especially the first time you're doing it. Um, like Kathy said, it will be on the video um, afterwards, uh, so you can always double check there. So we've got our circuit, we've got our code, let's start simulating. So I'm going to start the simulation in three, two, one, and everybody let's see what happens. So at the moment, the LED has turned on and that's absolutely right because you can change the amount of light that the, uh, because obviously this photoresistor isn't actually seeing any light, we have to tell it how much light to see. So if you click on it, you can see that this little sliding scale comes up, yeah? Has everybody clicked on it to see the scale? Give me a wave when you, if you can see this scale up here. Brill? Um, and if you move this scale, you can change the amount of light it thinks it's seeing. So if we go up to here, so it's super bright. Now it's saying, hey, I'm super bright. And you can see that the LED, my little light has turned off. But if I move it back down around about here, it's like, oh no, it's got dark. I've got to turn myself on again. So you could use this kind of circuit in your um, final designs to, um, uh, to turn on automatically when it gets dark. There are other ways that you could do it. You could control it with a button or you could control it when it shakes. But I think turning on when it gets dark is a really nice idea. So give me a wave if your LED is working, if it turns on when it gets dark. Oh, fantastic. Good job, Ben. That was a Really big wave. Oh, loads of you. That's amazing. Really good job, everybody. Fab? All right. Um, so that is how you build them. And uh, what we'd love is between now and next week, if you build the circuit, um, build it in real life using your bread, using your breadboards and your components, uh, and then um, doing that. And if we get time in a bit, we will start 
to build our circuits in real life as well, but we might not get time for that. Um, so what we did before was a little bit of a, what this uh, code is, is a little bit of a cheat, isn't it? Because I told you what number to put in here. And that's because I'd already checked and I knew what number I needed to put in there. Um, okay, and you can change this, you can change this number um, to whatever you want, uh, to any kind of, so I could change it to 500 and see what difference that makes. You can see it stays light further up there, it stays alight. Um, but it was a bit of a cheat, wasn't it? I just told you what number to put in there and it would be much better if we figured out for ourselves what number we wanted to put in there, wouldn't it? Now, there is a really easy way of doing this using Tinkercad and it's using this little thing here called the serial monitor, which is super, super useful. Um, and what we're gonna do is we are going to get the, um, get it, get the computer to tell us what number um, the, so what number, what light, amount of light our little resistor can see. So, um, and we're gonna get it to tell it, uh, to print it out down here. Right, so to do that, we need to get this output. Yeah, so you go to output and if you go down here, you can see there's this thing that says print to serial monitor. Yeah, has everyone found that? Yeah, so drag that out and just pop it in the, um, in your repeat loop in there. So if we left it like this, what would happen is that it would just say, hello world. Um, and we just keep printing hello world. And that's a nice thing to say, but it's not terribly useful for us at the moment. What we want it to print is what number the, our, resist, our, fo our little light sensor is telling us. So we can use the input function again and say, read that pin and just pop that instead of hello world. So if you'll see, I need to change that to A1 because that's what it's there, okay? So now it says print serial monitor to A1. And then just so that our eyes don't go a bit crazy because it's trying to print out too many things at once, we're just gonna put a little bit of a weight. And we've used weight before when we were making flashing lights, if you remember. So after that, we're gonna put a weight just for like half a second or something um, in between there. So give me a wave when you're ready to test this out. Um, brilliant. Fab. Okay, so everybody's ready to test this out. Um, click, before we start simulation, if you click on the serial monitor down here, just so you can see all of this, uh, like a white space there, um, and then start simulation. What it's gonna do is it gonna, it's, it's gonna print out the number that is being sent all along this wire to pin A1. So three, two, one, and let's start the simulation. Initializing, so you can see here, it's printing out the number six. So when it's dark, it's sending a value of six. And then if I change it to be super bright, you can see the number has changed to 679. Or you could change it to here. You see, oh, okay, that's a bit lower, that's 607. You could change it like that, 487, or all the way down here, 343. So that's how I knew to tell you that to put a number in of about 400, okay? Uh, because I'd already tested it and I knew what numbers to put in. You can just experiment to see which numbers you want uh, you wanted to put in there and where you want it to change. But this is a really helpful, um, using this app printout to serial monitor is really helpful, especially if you've got more complicated code uh, where sometimes things are going wrong and you don't know where it's going wrong or how it's going wrong. You can print out messages to the serial monitor and that will really help you um, to debug uh, and help you to, to figure out what's going wrong. All right, so does everybody, has everybody done that? Has every, uh, give me a wave if you can see the different numbers changing. Fab? Oh, you are all just brilliant. And very excited that it's working, fantastic. 
Okay. All right. Good job, everybody. Um, so this is a really nice way of um, of uh, controlling your LED, um, depending on whether it is dark or it is light, which is nice. There are other ways that you could control your LED. So you could use a button like this. I'll hold it right up so you may be able to see it. Uh, so that is what our button looks like. Um, there. Um, or um, there is also a tilt switch as well, which you could use. Um, so you have been absolutely amazing. Uh, and so now I have a question for you. Would you like to learn how to use it, uh, how to use the button to control the, the LED? Or should we make our real circuit? Or would you like to do that on your own? So if you would like to do, to do the button, give me a wave. Okay, and if you'd like to build the real circuit, give me a wave. Okay, so that was about half and half. So um, <laughs> uh, that was about half like and mostly half. button in the chat, but still some okay. real circuits as well. Awesome. Well, probably half and the, half. <laughs> no, let's do the button then, uh, because buttons are pretty cool. Um, and let's use those. So I've shown you what the button looks like in real life. In the Tinkercad, it's just here, it's called a push button. So uh, we'll build our push button circuit and um, then you've got the plan so that you can build the real circuit later. So get your push button, get your circuit, drag it over and you need to make sure that it goes over this middle this little um, like gully track, blank bit in the middle. I don't actually know what it's called. So you see down the middle, there's a bit with no, um, with no holes in. So you make sure that two of your button um, legs are on one side and two are on the other. Okay, so give me a wave when you've got your button in place. Ah, oh, jolly good. Okay, uh, and then it's basically just the same as our photoresistor. So as, as this here, so we want a, um, ooh, sorry, I made you really tiny then. Um, we want a wire that goes to the power, just like this wire, this red wire here. So we're gonna go from here all the way down here. So from one of the legs down to the power. And because it's going to power, I'm gonna turn it red. Now, obviously, the color of your wire doesn't matter um, physically, but if you've got like a code, then it makes it easier to help you um, figure out what's going wrong uh, if something does go wrong. So just like that, we've got our red wire that goes to the power. So it goes to the plus line down here. And then we want a resistor at the other leg, but just like with the um, with our light sensor, we want that to go from uh, the other leg of our button all the way down to our minus uh, line, to our blue line down here, okay? And then finally, just like with our resistor, we want a way of telling um, the computer whether the button has been pressed or not, okay? So we're gonna go, um, from, um, from the same line as the resistor. And we're gonna to go to one of the digital pins. I'm gonna pick pin eight here. I'm gonna turn that yellow. So it's just the same as with our light sensor, okay? So you can see that it's a complete circuit. It goes all the way um, uh, from the Arduino uh, through the power up here through this wire to the button, along the button, through the resistor, and then back to ground. All right, so give me a wave when you've done your, um, when you've got all of those things in place. Fab? Honestly, you're all doing so brilliantly today. I'm so impressed. And then we need to code it. All right. Let's go back to our code. 
Uh, and what I'm going to do is, uh, what we want to do is we want to do pretty much the same thing, but with a button instead of the um, light sensor. So a sneaky way of uh, getting all of this code quickly is if you right click on the code like that, you'll see that you've got some options and you can actually just duplicate that. So make a copy of them. So if you click duplicate, then I've got two copies of it and I'm just gonna pop it down here like that. So now I've got two things that are exactly the same, but it saves me from uh, dragging out all of those things again. Now, let's keep this one uh, at the top, our photo, our photo, our light sensor the same, uh, uh, but we want to test the button out now. So we don't want this to run while we're simulating this. So let's turn this so that instead of saying when one equals one, we say one, equal, one is not equal to one, one is less than one. And that's never going to happen, is it? Uh, so this just won't run. So it won't matter what light there is. Um, and maybe just to remind ourselves of which bit is doing which, we can use this. Um, so you can use this thing called comments. If you go to notation, you can put a comment up here. And here we write light sensor, just so that we remind ourselves that that bit of code is for the light sensor. And comments are really, really important in people's code, everyone, um, because it's not often, it's not just one person that's doing code, it's hundreds of people who are all trying to write the same code. If you don't put comments in, nobody knows what you've done. So let's do that one, and then let's do this. And so that is the button. All right. So what we want to do is we want to change these so that instead of being um, instead of being read from this pin down here, which is the light sensor, we want to read from this pin up here, which is our button, don't we? So you can take out this read analog pin. And remember, you can just move it over here to delete it or press delete. We want to do that. Okay. And then for our input, we want to read the digital pin, whichever digital pin you've got that is connected to the button. So mine is pin eight. So we put one there and we put one there. Now we are zooming through this a bit because it's getting quite close to the end. So just give me a wave if you've got that, um, if you've done that. If you haven't, that's absolutely fine. Uh, we can, you can always watch the video um, later. So you should have, well, one equals one, read digital pin eight or whichever digital pin your button is connected to. Uh, and then we're gonna print that out. Oh, we don't have to do that if you don't want to. And then if, and what we want to do is if the button is pushed, so if that is equal to one, then we want our light to go on. And if it's not equal to one, so if it's not pushed, we want it to turn off, okay? How's it going, everybody? Give me a wave if you're ready to test our code, test your code. We have gone super quickly through this little bit, so don't worry if you're um, not quite there yet. Oh, I'm just gonna make the code a little bit bigger for you. There. All right. So let's just, lots of you have got hands raised. Um, don't worry if you haven't, I'll stay on for a little bit so we can uh, go over this again at the end. So we're just gonna start our simulation, initializing, and now it's ready. Now our, early, our little light is not on, but that's okay because the button isn't pressed. Let's see if I've done it right. So to press the button, all you need to do is click on the button. And you can see when I click on the button, my light turns on. And if I don't click on the button, my light turns off. So give me a wave if you have a button that turns on with your light. Sorry, I'm just gonna lower everyone's hand so that I can tell if, you're, if you've done it. Fab. So we definitely have some buttons that are, some lights that are turning on with buttons and some lights that turn on when, it's get dark, get it, when it gets dark. 
That is absolutely fantastic, everybody. Um, you have done such, such a good job. Well done. So, um, like I said, uh, I will stay on for a little bit because I know that we did go through that last bit really quickly. Um, so we can go over it again um, after, uh, after we've finished. Um, and what we'd love you to do is with your grown-ups um, over the next week is to build the circuits in real life. So to build them using your breadboard and all of your components. And if you do have any questions, you can always email us uh, with a picture of your circuit or a screenshot of your code. Um, and we can see how we can help over the next week. But for now, if that's all right, I'm gonna hand over to Tommy, um, who's just gonna tell you a little bit more about, um, uh, about what's gonna happen next week. And I'm also uh, going to say that uh, tomorrow, Kathy is gonna email you all out with a link that's gonna have all of this code uh, um, in it. So you don't have to uh, remember it. You can just uh, have a look at that code so that you can do it in your own time later on. Okay. All right. So Tommy, do you want to tell us about next week? I'm super excited. <laughs> Sorry about, thank you for that. Yeah. Hi everyone. Um, so yeah, next week we thought we would take it one step further and see what we could do sort of um, in the real world with our uh, putting stuff together with our fingers and arts and crafts. And um, uh, so we're hoping we can create something that you can, sort of display either at home or if you want, you can place it in the window where people can kind of see it. Um, the Lights Festival, um, as you know, was something we kind of go through town and do. And we thought this would be a nice way to kind of still share your creations, if even just kind of displayed at home in the window or by your Christmas tree or whatnot, just to kind of celebrate the lights. Um, so there's there's, as you can imagine, there's a lot of variations you can do with, with the artistic practice of it. Um, but I thought what I would do is I would just go through some supplies now that you might want to gather and put together. And then next week, we'll talk about how we can put some of those supplies together. So I'll just real quickly, I'll just say a few things uh, for you to keep in mind. If you have a pen and a piece of paper, you can jot some of this down. But this information will also be available um, later on, on online where you can find it there as well. So um, just uh, if you want to make it sort of Christmassy in the vein of um, Christmas craft, if you went to like your local hobby craft, you can buy something called a Christmas craft uh, kit. And that has a lot of great pieces put together that um, you could order this online as well that have a lot of pre-made um, cut out shapes and bits you can put together, but that in that there'll be PVA glue, there'll be spark, uh, sparkly bits, um, really good source of just finding everything in one for this, this kind of kit. But if you kind of want to go off and do your own thing, you can also, of course, just get popsicle, popsicle, popsicle sticks, um, sorry, pipe cleaners, sugar paper, craft paper, of course, scissors, markers, paint, brushes, uh, tape, um, and um, uh, wire uh, for, for shaping and creating more structural bits, sculptural bits. Um, the garden wire that has the plastic coating around it is quite good because yeah, it's more insulated um, with the metallic bits and, and a little bit of electrics. Um, also, if you can get some sort of like shiny paper, something that um, has a reflective quality to it, that kind of can mirror because when you're creating stuff with lights, if you have kind of the, this plasticky reflectively paper, that'd be quite useful to bounce light off from. So anything that's kind of reflective is gonna be quite useful to have. Um, and then if you wanna sort of not get it too um, sticky with glue and paint and sort of a real um, DIY arts and crafts kind of style, if you wanna have your creation be a bit more clean, um, as a recommendation, you can also grab your Legos you might have in your house and put sort of a um, little sculpture on this together with Legos, whether it be a little a man, a little robot, um, you know, like a little monster face or a Christmas decoration, something you might want to hang from your tree. Um, and you can uh, potentially use white tack to stick onto the Lego and then you can, and then, you know, secure the breadboard and the main board to it. So um, white tack is quite useful um, as the bonding agent when you don't want to get 
sort of like glue inside here. You want to get paint inside here, obviously, because that will jam it up. So um, consider white tack is a really good option. Have a good amount of that. Also, as you probably know, this has got a sticky back on it. So that's going to be quite helpful. Um, and then we'll talk about some shapes and ways you can put things together, put this inside of it. Um, of course, you're going to want to sort of consider that the lights will come from the front of this. So I think the most straightforward concept would be to create some kind of front piece where the lights can kind of come through and shine through. Um, if in your house you have any food containers that you can even get from your recycling bin, this is just a clear plastic um, tub. But as you can see, light can pass through it. So it's quite a, it's quite a useful tool when you want to create something um, that you want to add bits to for your light to shine through. And it can very easily house all the units. So as you see, that could be quite useful. So if you have some bits around, it could even be um, a, a jar even if it's not plastic like this. But I would say um, keep your eye out for something like this around the house uh, because it could be quite handy to have. So um, uh, hopefully that will give you some ideas of different materials, things you can kind of come up with. And really there's no right or wrong or specific way to do it. It's whatever you want to kind of put together and have fun with um, and just sort of uh, enhance the light project you already have. So we'll have some more information online for you to um, have a think about and look at some other materials. Absolutely. Uh, so thank you all so much for coming, everybody. Um, it's been wonderful um, to see how brilliantly you've all been doing. I'm so impressed uh, with them and I'm sure that Sarah and Helen and Kathy and Tommy are um, as well. Uh, so over to you, Kathy. Thank you, Sophie. So this is the end of the session for today, but I know Sophie is available to hang around for a few more minutes. So if anybody has any issues with what we've gone through today, by all means, stick around for a few minutes and we'll try to troubleshoot those. Um, but there are two more sessions to go. So we'll be taking your, um, your breadboards and Arduinos and turning them into something really pretty and attractive as a, uh, a light decoration for Christmas.